Hello, my talk is about a uh, tight lower bound for straight complementation. And this is joint work with uh, uh, Yang Cai. So first, the introduction. And uh, so uh, we have uh, heard a lot about model checking since the beginning of this uh, conference. And uh, here to talk about the automata theoretical uh, model checking, so basically the system is represented uh, as uh, uh, an automata, and the property is also represented by another automata. So roughly, the thing is to say, the verification reduced to be a uh, uh, language containment uh, language containment problem, and it can be reduced by these two operations. So the intersection is fairly uh, trivial. So the complementation is. Uh, somehow uh, crucial in the whole uh, efficiency of the algorithm. So for this reason, and the complementation is a fundamental problem in automata theory. Actually, this is just one example. So when we talk about any computation models, uh, it's natural to ask whether the computation is closed under complementation and how efficient it is. So. Uh, during the past, uh, say, uh, almost uh, 50 years, uh, there are steady uh, improvement on bookie complementation algorithm. Until fairly recently, uh, 2009, uh, should we get the result n squared times ln, where ln is roughly uh, this number. So, and uh, this match well with uh, Yen's lower bound, uh, ln is also this. So basically, there's a polynomially tight uh, for this uh, com bookie complementation. So, but there are automatons beyond bookie. So two guys are very important. So one guy is called the uh, straight automata. So this is not the typo, and, uh, and uh, another is called the Rabin automata. So straight automata can express the f strong fairness com conditions. Basically, if a transition is enabled infinite often, it's going to be taken infinite often. And uh, the Rabin automata is a deal of a straight automata. So uh, uh, basically, it can express something called fair termination. That uh, every infinite computation is unfair. So that means uh, the program terminates fairly. OK, so there are the complementation beyond bookie, and uh, by a uh, sequence of result uh, by Kufman and Vardy, we have known Rabin, uh, complementation procedures for Rabin automata, straight automata, and the generalized bookie automata. So meantime, we have uh, the corresponding lower bound. Because Yen's re uh, all these automatas are generalized of bookie automata, so Yen's uh, lower bound also applies to Rabin and straight. Also, Yan in 2006 paper gave a, a, a lower bound for generalized bookie. So, but still there's a big gap between for straight and the Rabin. So because uh, here we have this K parameter. And this K is called the Rabin index or straight index depending on the context. So, this k can be as large as 2 to n. So because this k appear on the shoulder of all this complexity, uh, so that means it could be double exponential in terms of n. So uh, in the previous 24 hours, we have this Rabin computation result. So this is a messy notation, but uh, roughly speaking, the kufern martys construction is uh, optimal, and uh, we cannot do much about this k. This k has to be 2 to n, and uh, it has to be on the shoulder of another two, so that's it. So now, the, in this talk, I'm going to talk about the result on straight complementation. So for straight complementation, we have this uh, nice result where we have this 
feet are on the shoulder. That means, uh, so in this talk, we talk about uh, how to get the lower bound. The upper bound uh, was published in uh, CSI, uh, CSI this year. So this is the result I'm going to talk about next. So uh, uh, quick introduction to notations. We basically, what is omega automata? It's uh, uh, just a classical NFA, non-deterministic automata, um, with special acceptance conditions. So almost everything is the same as before. Actually, everything is the same as before, except uh, uh, this f uh, could, be have, could take many form. And uh, this f is called acceptance conditions. So omega automata is classified according to acceptance conditions. So for Buki, basically, uh, the infer row means the set of states that visit easily many often by O. Uh, sorry, row. So the infer row, so this means uh, the row visited F easily many times. Then this row is accepting. So for straight, this condition, this F, is actually a tuple of a pair of states. So here we see that the length of the tuple is called the index length. Uh, so for this case, suppose uh, we have k pairs, each one is called g i b i, and the condition says uh, there exists uh, an index for all index. If rho visit g i infinite often, then it also visit b i infinite often. So this is the straight condition, and. Uh, this Rabin condition is just the deal of the straight condition. So we just do the negation of this condition, we get this path. Uh, it says that there exists an index such that uh, rho only visits gi finitely times, but uh, it visits the bi infinitely many times. OK? So, so here is just an example of Buki automata. Say if I put the F to be a set Q1 contains Q1 and Q2, then what language this automata accept? It accepts uh, uh, all words that uh, contains infinite many Bs. So similarly, if I just make a small change to this F, I, uh, I change this F to, to uh, a, a K tuple, which has two pairs, then what, what language it accept? It is going to accept uh, uh, almost as before, except uh, th those words with uh, alternating A and B. Okay. So the complementation problem basically to, to get another automata which exactly accept uh, the complementary language. Okay. So now it's time to talk about lower bound, and uh, it's based on the synthesis of three. Uh, proof ideas. So the first one is called the footing set. Uh, I'm sure this concept has been used and appeared much earlier in '96, but uh, we found this paper gave good uh, uh, presentation. So a footing set basically identifies certain uh, with runs with dual properties, and we call it the footing runs. And uh, we, when we paste these runs together in certain ways, it can uh, induce non-accepting runs. So uh, the, uh, in the next slides, we will talk about each one in, in, more, in detail. So the full automata. So this is a kind of a uh, misnomer. It's nothing full about. So the idea is this. Since the ultimate goal is to construct uh, contradictory runs. So why should uh, not start with uh, uh, runs directed and build words later? So the traditional way, we first find a word, then we have a run, right? But because the word may be so difficult, so sophisticated, uh, to very hard to find, and uh, since the final goal is run, let's start with run and uh, uh, worry about the word later. So even with these two weapons, uh, this does not mean uh, the things are easy. 
and because the explicit description of a fooling run may still be hard to construct. So this is Yan's breakthrough in 2006, and uh, essentially properties of a fooling run can be capturized uh, using rankings. So in this way, uh, basically further uh, reduce the workload of this construction. Okay, so let's, let's first, uh, something is called a fooling set. So uh, this is just one type of definition. So a set of pairs is called a fooling set. Say here, uh, this fooling set is still defined on words, okay? Uh, so basically, if i not equal to j, then x, y, uh, uh, sorry, x, i, y, j does not belong to l. Uh, if the index is the same, uh, when these two words join together, they, then the, the final word belongs to L. Okay, theorem says if a language has a full inside of a certain size, then any NFA that recognizes L should have at least uh, uh, that number of states. So that's why we, that's how we can get the lower bound. So full automata. So there are four points I want to emphasize. So, so as I said, there's a difficulty because fooling word could be long and hard to, to be guessed right at the beginning. So we focus on runs. This is the question. And there's a concept of lifting that is every possible unit uh, transition graph is treated as a letter. So there's no difference between word and uh, graph. Graph is word, word is graph. So, and the power was demonstrated long before in this, in, in this paper, this 2 to n lower bound for, for complementing NFA uh, is very short and easy to read. Okay, so I, I talk about the full automata, then we talk about the data graph. So what is a data graph? So let's forget about the definition. It's so easy to understand when we show this demonstration. Uh, so basically, we can just forget about this uh, left-hand side because all the information has been encoded here. Right? Let's suppose uh, uh, this uh, every letter appear in this world. Basically, this is a unit bipartite graph, this is another one. So basically, uh, the unit graph will uh, characterize all transition relations of the automata for, with respect to a specific letter. So what full automata means, uh, I just uh, draw any pictures as I like, and I treat uh, this graph as a word. So ranking. The last part. So uh, the ranking represents the properties of uh, on graphs, and uh, the diversity of rankings uh, is a complexity measure. So since uh, uh, Clark then introduced this ranking in '91, uh, many improvement has been done, uh, has been obtained uh, by using rankings. So uh, basically, all. all Complementation constructions for omega automatas of all common types has been discovered by Kufman and Vardy. So, uh, and Yan in 2006, kind of like a reverse engineering and proved the lower bound for bookie complementation uh, by, by using rankings to construct fooling set. Okay. So, how much time do I have? Three minutes. Oh, 50, okay. So, uh, okay. So let's uh, just quickly go over what, rank, what ranking-based uh, complementation is. So the idea is this. So vertex on this graph, each level, every vertex is associated with a value, an integer. And uh, the association at a level can be viewed as a function mapping from the state side to the integer domain, 
and this function is called the code T level ranking. So if we want to complement the automata of type T, the ranking we are looking for is called the code T ranking. So the code T ranking are required to satisfy, okay, satisfy uh, some, something called local properties. And another thing is called the, uh, which can be capitalized by step-by-step -step check of the automata. So another, another special kind of Coty rankings called the old Coty rankings. Basically, they are talking about global properties. And these global properties can be capitalized by bookie condition. So that's how the whole complementation is done. And uh, this, this is a generic complementation scheme. You can see this F prime is where we check uh, the bookie condition we want. And this data prime is uh, to defined to capture local properties. So I, I omit all these details, but this is basically uh, the, the scheme of the complementation. And uh, say that this is the general theorem, say basically the, a graph is a code T accepting, that means uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a run graph of, the company, uh, of a word that shouldn't be accepted if only if this graph admits an old code T ranking. So I give you a quick example of how bookie complementation is done. So we are looking for co-bookie rankings. So this co-bookie rankings has two, uh, two uh, itemized def uh, a def a definition with two items. So basically, the first says uh, uh, if uh, a vertex with old number, then this vertex shouldn't belong to the final state. And the second says uh, the, if we have an edge from level i to level i plus one, and the number is not increasing. So, so the here is an example. Say we have, this is the data graph. Every vertex is associated with the integer value, and uh, this is a level ranking, this is another level ranking. The whole thing is called a co uh, level ranking, uh, co ranking. And uh, you see, this, uh, this automata is the principal one we shown. Uh, so the Q1, Q2 are, in, are the final sets, state set. So for this, this guy, it has all the number, right? So it, it shouldn't belong to the final set. So basically, this satisfies the condition, and uh, it's a co ranking. Uh, this is just show the flavors, the rankings with data graph. And uh, next we show how to do a construction to get things, uh, get what we want. So, uh, first we design uh, something called the full straight automata. The definition uh, looks messy here, but uh, is very clear in the e an example. So the important thing is about this something called the Q ranking. Q is just a name we picked. And uh, the Q ranking is a function from state side to this range, and uh, they which can be viewed as a, as a pair of rankings, R and H. So R is called R ranking, H is called H ranking. And uh, let's forget about the R ranking. So this is not very important because the, its contribution uh, to the complexity is uh, uh, minimum compared with a H ranking. So let's talk about H ranking. So H ranking basically is a Q, a map Q to a permutation of index. So suppose uh, we, the index index size is K, then basically we, so the, the value of this function is just a permutation of one to K. So here is the example. Consider the case where n is equal to three, k is equal to two. So we have three states. These are main states, okay? So the first column is this R ranking. Let's forget about them. And the second uh, column is this H ranking. Uh, each one is a pair of natural numbers. So all other states are auxiliary states to facilitate the construction. 
So they basically, that's the full straight automata, this related data graph, and so on. OK, the next important thing is we are going to build a word. And the, remember, word is graph. So basically, we are going to uh, draw a graph with certain properties. And this graph we call the Q word. So for each Q ranking F, we are going to define a word called a GF. So if, if this, this word is basically a data graph, right? every level is ranked by F and with the following four properties. And also very ma uh, messy, but uh, let's uh, forget about one, three, four. And uh, we let's zoom in two. This is uh, the essential one. So what does this property say? So basically, for each state Q, there is there exactly K path. So row one to row K, such that for each I, uh, row I satisfy four conditions. And now this is a little bit the fancy too. Uh, here I changed from the subscript to function notation to just say for typesetting purpose. But uh, so let's forget about H and the Q because they are parameters, right? Basically, this is what this H Q it gives you a permutation of indices, right? And uh, we just pick. Uh, the jth, uh, the, the value in, uh, in the jth position. So this is uh, everything in the parentheses. So let's forget about that. Let's just oversimplify this as a bj. Okay. So what what does this mean? So so row i does not visit bj if j is less than or equal to i. And the second says row row i visit uh, bj if j is greater than i. So the these two first two things about uh, the visit of B. The last two things is about the visit of G. So the row I does not visit G, uh, GJ if J is less than I, and the row I visit uh, GJ, uh, GI. So they're still not very straightforward, but uh, I hope this picture can help you. So uh, this means no visit. This uh, check means visit, and this star means no care. So what all this condition says is this. OK? Forget about this HQ. We just think uh, this, is, uh, uh, th this is the trivial permutation. OK? Then what happened is this. Basically, there exists the I where at this position, GI is visited, but the BI is not visited. And before that position, neither GI nor BI is visited. And after that, we don't care about the G, and we require that the BJ are all visited if J is greater than I. So that, that's the idea. So if put into everything in English, uh, it's kind of uh, cryptical. So we are almost done. We, we say some, uh, this word uh, with some, uh, this is a word uh, GF, uh, repeat uh, infinite many times. Okay? So we say it has a rabbit nature. What does that mean? Basically, uh, there is. So basically, that means that the word repeats infinite many times. And at each two points, we have k paths. So no matter how we choose these paths, we are going to have a minimum index here. And this gi visited, but all bi are not visited. OK? So here, I just list one repetition. Remember, there are infinite many, right? But we are going to have a minimum i. Minimum i with this property. So gi is visited infinitely many times, where bi is not visited, uh, only visited finite many times. That means uh, this word shouldn't, uh, should be accepted by Rabin automata. So we say this is a uh, Rabin nature. 
And suppose we have two different F and G, and we do this uh, pasting, and, and let this re repeat equally many times. This plus is just a standard uh, uh, repeat. Uh, uh, finitely, uh, non-zero finitely many times, okay? So then what will happen? We have this. In one fragment, we have this, this uh, I, GI is visited, but BI is not visited. But because H is different from H prime, so we can, we can and this is the permutation. So we are, we, are, we are sure that this unsatisfied obligation is going to be satisfied by someone here. And uh, re reversely, we, we, we have this, ob this unsatisfied obligation is going to be satisfied somewhere here. Oh, sorry, uh, this I is the first place where H is different from H prime. Because there are permutation, everything before them are equal. So let's just forget about that. So, so suppose this is one, this must be two, this is two, this is must, must be one, because there are permutation, right? So then, they, they kind of like uh, complement uh, to each other. So uh, basically we have for every i, if gi is visited infinitely many times, then bi also visited infinitely many times. So this should be accepted by straight automata. So we say this word with a straight nature. Now we have th two lemmas and one theorem. Basically, for any Q rankings F, this guy does not belong to LA. Where for any two different Q rankings FG, this guy is the subset of LA. Now it's uh, uh, straightforward to get the uh, conclusion that the state says of any complementary, uh, any complementary automata of A is no less than the number of Q rankings. So the number of Q rankings going to serve as the lower bound of the complementation construction. Okay. So now lower bound is reduced to circuit design. This picture has nothing to do with our paper. I just copied uh, to show uh, the idea this is a uh, circuit design now. Basically, you get, get the circuit and uh, you show this circuit has some properties and you're done. So, but there are some difficulties because we have k desired path between each horizontal point. And uh, we want to make sure they do not interfere with each other. So the solution is we do some, something called a parallel composition. And uh, basically each word uh, divides into k segments. And the uh, path rho i is only active in the i-th segment uh, where the property is fulfilled. In all other segment, the rho i is uh, dominant. And to, just to make sure, the property satisfied won't be violated. Okay, so this is, uh, if I can borrow some timing graph, the idea is this. We have segment, and uh, this row one is going to have the property fulfilled here, and then just the maintenance, and uh, similarly row two, and, uh, and the whole part, whole word, the, the, the whole graph now is called a, a Q word. Okay, so complexity. So when K is small, so here basically uh, we say K is equal to ON, then the number of R rankings, remember we forget about this number of R rankings because it not, does not matter too much, uh, is the, N, the factorial N, the number of HR rankings, is uh, the factorial of k to n. So if you do the calculation, you will have this number. And uh, the good news is that even k is large, say we use k equal to omega n, 
that means the case is above linear in term of n. Uh, there's no change of number of R rankings, but the number of H rankings uh, is just this. Basically, K saturated at N. So the final result will be 2 to N squared log N. So conclusion. And uh, we have showed the uh, uh, lower bound for straight commutation. So combine uh, the result with uh, what we have, and uh, 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 people have, uh, uh, which we know by uh, uh, obtained by other researchers. So we now we have kind of have a complete picture of uh, commutation. So this, you, you notice, all we have theta on every shoulder of this. Uh, uh, complex notation. So uh, in a recent paper, uh, we, we also showed for determinization, all this has the same complexity. So uh, of course, this NFA, well, I just put NFA here to show uh, this, uh, this phenomenon. That, uh, for complementation and determinization, we always have this uh, kind of uniform complexity. So, so the question is this uniform, uh, this, uh, uh, this uniformity is a coincidence or, or not. So I, I think it may worth investigation further. And uh, thank you for your attention.